As our understanding of the impact food can have on the brain has changed, it's becoming more apparent that food can trigger the same neural effects as seen in addiction. To discuss this, I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Dr. Ashley Gearhard. Dr. Gearhard, welcome. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Let's kick off. What is food addiction? So what we think of when we say food addiction is that we hypothesize that really highly processed rewarding foods can trigger all the key indicators of an addictive substance use disorder, like we see with alcohol and nicotine. And so how we conceptualize this is we apply the DSM-5 diagnostic criteria for substance use disorders to the intake of foods like chocolate and ice cream and potato chips. And we see that about 14% of adults and 12% of children would qualify for a substance use disorder if the substance you were looking at was highly processed food. What effect does this have on people who are addicted to these foodstuffs? Yeah, what we see for people who seem to show those addiction profiles is that it really does feel like their relationship with food um, is very toxic for them and that it's compulsive. And even if they want to stop or they're having health conditions that suggest they really need to change their diet, they find that they can't. And our research finds that this addictive profile predicts um, a worse treatment response to our traditional approaches to trying to help people lose weight or eat healthier, and that people who meet for this addictive profile with their highly processed food intake have a lower quality of life across every single domain. So this is really a group of people who are clinically suffering that right now, because this isn't a diagnostic category in our, our manual, we're kind of missing the assessment and identification of these people. I imagine a lot of these conditions feed into each other, don't they, as well, because of obesity and uh, a lot of different other conditions. Absolutely, you're right. So we see that um, if we look at someone who is maybe has um, a body mass index in the normal weight range, it's about 7% of people would meet for this food addiction profile. If we look at individuals with obesity, it goes up to about one in three. And when we look at um, the association with something like, let's say, type 2 diabetes, it is incredibly highly linked and at sometimes sixfold as high risk of type 2 diabetes for people with this addiction profile. And we also see that there's a lot of um, high risk substance use that can also co-occur. So just like we see with things like gambling or people can, uh, who are at risk for drinking might also be at risk for smoking or using cannabis in a risky way, we see that there also might be this clustering of risky, highly processed food intake for people who are showing addictions in other realms. What's the role for a psychiatrist here? Yes, so a role for a psychiatrist, I think in large part, um, you know, the psychiatric community plays such an important part in helping us conceptualize and identify clinically significant conditions. And I think the science has been emerging to a point where we really need to ask ourselves whether there's time to, at least in a provisional way, start to um, codify and investigate and diagnose this to help improve the science and improve treatment. I just think psychiatry has a lot to say and to bear on different addiction-focused treatments, whether that's pharmacology or psychobiological treatments that we have developed in the realm of addictive disorders, um, like naltrexone, like bupropren, that might really also be applicable to this large group of individuals who are currently really struggling to um, change their relationship with food. Does this also lead to greater health inequity? Yes. So we see that our modern food supply is wildly unequal and that for communities of color, for people who are under-resourced, that uh, it's not just that they live in food deserts where they can't access healthy food, but they live in food swamps where they're aggressively targeted to and marketed for these highly processed foods. And it's on every corner and the queues and the drive throughs and the bodegas are, are really just drenched in these foods. And we see this really starts even in childhood that, you know, people who have food insecurity and don't have enough money in their families to eat um, food every month in a sustainable way, that that is associated with an increased risk of developing this addictive eating profile um, because you're really reliant on something that might be addictive to just get your daily needs met. Nobody gets to opt out of eating. And so when the um, environment is so incredibly imbalanced and um, structurally unfair, uh, we do see that this has really important social justice implications. Thank you very much. Thank My you pleasure. for joining us. Thank Thanks you. you.